There we go. Yay. Welcome to the next Practitioner Roundtable. I am Bo, and I am jumping in here today to hang out with some of my absolute favorite people. I want to just uh, do a quick summary. If you haven't seen a Practitioner Roundtable from the SAGE Method yet, I want to uh, kind of let you know what it is and what's going on with the Roundtable. These incredible individuals, each and every one of them have trained with me for um, I, I want to say a year, but it's really more than a year. Like technically it's a year, but we, we just sort of keep going and we keep meeting and it's an amazing community. But the practitioners that you see in this round table are, inc are incredibly skilled. Their, their abilities have been honed and they just have the biggest hearts I know. And I'm really grateful to be able to work with all of them. So in this round table, we're gonna uh, ask him some questions so you can get to know him, but let's do that first. Let's uh, inter let's introduce each of the practitioners. Leslie, can I start with you? Sure, I'm Leslie Levine and um, I'm an animal communicator and an intuitive and I'm learning healing too. Nice. I'll go next. Um, <laughs> Might as well. I I graduated last June. I think I throw that in there almost every time. My my specialty is mostly card readings. Um, what was I going to say about that? I told you I'm drawing blanks tonight, so <laughs> you'd have to jump in for me. But um, I've oh, Bo teaches us how to um, read cards intuitively, and I'm trying my hand with oracle decks right now. <laughs> instead of tarot. Nice, nice. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Millen. And Bo, oh, that was quite an, 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 I can't even talk either. Like you're trying to blank. I can't even get words out of my mouth, but that was a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. It's good to see everyone. Um, I'm Michelle and I am an empath. And so a lot of um, the readings I do and the work I do involve emotion and um, helping people identify their own beauty and magic inside to bring that to the surface. Absolutely. Sandy. Hi, I'm Sandy or Sandra Demers. And uh, I did my year with Bo and graduated over a year ago. <laughs> Time goes so fast. Um, right now I'm talking to you from sunny Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, this is uh, just a really beautiful, magical place. I suppose my specialty is intuition. And um, so I also do read Oracle cards and I just uh, sometimes, um, sometimes the connections are pretty, pretty awesome. And sometimes you feel like uh, you're in a place where um, you, you wonder where the magic went. And so, um, Right now, I'm really working with uh, what to do when you feel those ebbs and flows. Exactly. We were talking about that just earlier. Let's um, let's start off right there. So tell me a little bit more about what you um, started to talk about there and what do you do when, because it does, it it comes and then there's moments where it goes and you think yeah. you're gone. Yeah, uh, yes, and it's really helpful to know that people that have been doing this even, you know, professionally for years have that have that same experience and I think that connects us universally. And that alone has been a big help to me. I do have a main guide, a favorite guide who never leaves me. And so sometimes when I really am feeling real dark or like I've really um misunderstood everything that happened and I'm just a victim of coincidence and circumstance she'll come to me and take my hand very gently and remind me that that's not the case that that uh that the spiritual connection is very real and then she'll do something like throw a feather into my path or a beautiful coin or some synchronicity that has just awesome meaning that's awesome how about how about the rest of you? What do you do when all of a sudden it, it maybe it doesn't even feel like this, but all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, ah, I just haven't had a lot of spiritual connection, haven't had a lot of intuition going on. Well, I find that um, if that's going on for me, that I have to 
step back a little and stop pushing so hard. When I push really, really hard, uh, it works against me. So um, I have been known to dance or to sing to uh, change my, my present attitude. I love that. So what do you feel when you dance and sing with that intent? I feel like it raises my vibration. And it, it makes me looser and I don't concentrate so much on the pushing. Yeah. When you say it may, like makes me looser, it makes me think of that intuitive channel, just like relaxing. Going, okay. Okay. What about you, Michelle? Um, I would kind of describe it a very similarly to how Leslie just described it in the fact that um, when I start to feel that way, a like I start to cry and I step into self doubt and I start to push back and uh, get a little not mouthy with my guides, but kind of like, come on now, like you got to do something, show me something I'm here putting in the work. And I think that's the hardest part is it's like, if it had to do with heart, and if it had to do with my dedication, I should be completely open all the time, but it's not that. And so very much like Leslie, I have to just step back and take a breath and realize it's universal time. It's not my time and, um, connect with water. Uh, just, yeah, just, get out of that place and distract myself. Give myself grace. That's... Give yourself grace. Yeah. I love that. Brenda, I am really looking forward to hearing because <laughs> I know, I know what you, what you do when you, when you stall or have blocks. Well, when I have blocks, I, I, I fuss at Davy, And um, if you can imagine a, a very, He's a leprechaun. So he'll stand there with his arms crossed and tapping his foot and he'll let me yell and scream and holler <laughs> whatever my Southern isms will come out. And um, sometimes he'll ask me if I'm done. <laughs> Other times it's it's like, he, he just waits and he, he'll always say, you know, it's not time yet for whatever I'm fussing about. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's like, but you're not here every second of every day like we are. You're not stuck in the timeline. And I, I feel like that's what we're doing is we're getting bogged down in the humanness of it sometimes. And we just got to let it loose. <laughs> and Davey allows that for me. And then he gently reminds me that what I'm asking for is going to come to pass. But certain things have to line up first. <laughs> Patience. Lots of patience. That's what I need to learn. (laughs) That's universal. I feel like, I feel like it's just, it's, it's so common or maybe I feel that way because it's me. I don't know because I, I, I'm a very impatient person myself. Maybe I feel that way. I'm, um, I was struck with what some of you were saying and I was curious too. I think it's, it's a given that after your your journey stepping into being a practitioner it's a given that you work with clients it's a given that you um you meet with individuals and you tap in for them and you do readings and it it's very helpful and it's very uplifting i would be curious to know from each of you personally what going through opening up your intuition brought to you personally for like your own life because it's I've seen uh, what each of you are able to do with individuals the massive amount of help that you can provide and guidance is is huge and everyone has a moment in their life including readers when it helps to sit down with another reader and just check in and say I need I need to check in and make sure my path is lined up and all of you are amazing at helping other people do that but what I'm curious if there's something very striking in your life that perhaps shifted for you personally not professionally but personally not everyone, I'm sorry go ahead, go ahead Brenda. <laughs> I've gone back to doing um candle burning rituals 
I was raised Catholic, so ritualistic type ceremony type things really speak to me because it just is what it is. And the candle burning, um, it tends to calm me down more than if I just try to meditate because then I have the altar set up and the, the candle blessings and this, that, and the other that you do prepping and, and then the actual ritual itself. So it's, it's, for me, that's a soothe, soothing thing to do. And being a water sign, um, every now and again, I may have a water bowl next to the, the altar, but I, I, I definitely do gemstones and such for sure. For yourself to balance, mm -hmm. to center. So it sounds like you are taking more time for yourself for self-care. Yes, definitely. And I change it up every time we do a sacred space. Yeah. So that it's a, a new gratitude and a new goal and a new, you know, just, just something different every two weeks in, in sync with the moon. I love that. Leslie, what were you going to, you were going to say something too. Well, as an animal communicator, um, I, I first uh, heard and got messages of, uh, from other people's animals and it took me a little longer to get those messages from my own dog uh mabel and it's made me pay more attention to what she has to say because i found that um animals just mirror you um for instance mabel has really bad allergies and hey i've spent my whole life with allergies and, you know, as I can't find an answer to hers, I realize that there's a message there for me. Um, I may be spending more time trying to take care of her than taking care of myself. And that happens to me. I, I find that in my readings that um, if there's a problem with the animal, it's usually a reflection of what's going on with the person. That's fascinating. So... I shouldn't feel too bad then when my dog won't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I, um, I love, and, and I've always reached out to, you know, animal community like yourself, you know, to ask questions about animals and, and about my dog and things like that, because, you know, everyone has different strengths intuitively. And I'm always like a kid in a playground if a dog talks to me, but I feel like an animal will talk to me if they want to, <laughs> but I'm not necessarily in that, that lane of animal communication. So that's, that's more self-care. Michelle, how about you? Um, when my spiritual awakening started, I went to bed one night, one person and woke up the next morning, a completely different person, knowing that I couldn't go back and knowing that I wanted to move forward. So having to merge those two has been a real challenge for me. But the first thing that I really stepped into was realizing I'm an empath. Like all those years, I thought I was just moody and difficult to be around. I started realizing it, it wasn't me and that I needed to put, put up boundaries around me in order to stop picking up the energy of everybody else. And I will say that I feel like I just conduct my life completely different than before. I used to have a lot of anxiety. I used to have um, a lot of nervousness, but that has really subsided um, as I just step into the flow more and say, well, it's going to work out or, you know, give yourself grace. Uh, that's obviously one of my favorite statements because I've said it twice now. Um, and <laughs> yeah, just, it just feels completely softer it feels bigger it feels like get over yourself less ego and just really being able to see how to diffuse situations now rather than escalate them I love what you said about I woke up one day and felt strongly that there was no going back like you felt such a shift and I, I'm kind of, I'm relating to that because I would have never guessed that I could have had this like happiness and joy, you know, 20 years ago before I opened up intuitively too. And 
I'm wondering if you can um, talk a little bit more about what the shift felt like. Um, the shift came in, I had heard an aura reader on a podcast and I don't know, it just spoke to me. And then that night my grandma came to me and I've always had things happen to me in the spiritual or paranormal realm throughout my whole life, but I never had time to jump into it. And it really was very surface level and just kind of like, oh, what's a ghost? Oh, reincarnation. Oh, um, you know, so, so many things like that. Aliens. I didn't get any depth to it. I just knew I had an interest in it. And I think that was the biggest shift is when I woke up that next morning, it felt so deep. It felt so vast. It felt like the whole universe just went, here you go. I'm going to open up to you. And now you get to figure out this puzzle, which drives me a little bit crazy sometimes, but <laughs> we all understand that. <laughs> Absolutely. Sandy, can I ask um, from your perspective too, like what's what's different now for you personally versus when you first started on your spiritual journey? Um, when I, everything that Michelle is saying, I can relate to so deeply because I feel like I, like she could be reading my mail. Um, I too was, uh, I, I was so emotional um, most of my life. I called myself the blubber baby of the world. I couldn't stop the tears. Now, I still feel deep emotions, but I've learned how to set some boundaries. And I've learned also about <clears throat> how uh, the human condition itself isn't, um, it, it's a journey, it's an experience, and it's not something to be ashamed or afraid of. And so um, I, I also feel like I went from being one person who was um, I was actually quite deeply religious. I never missed a Sunday in church. And now I wouldn't call myself religious at all, but I'm very deeply spiritual. And I've learned the difference that at least for me, uh, what I was seeking in religion wasn't what I thought I was finding there. Um, mm -hmm. So that was one great big, huge change for me. And as everything aligned for me, my own journey made it so that when I went through the toughest things in life that a person has to go through, I had the strength to do it. So for me, it sort of saved my life. That's beautiful. That is such a beautiful way to express how the lows are going to, the lows are going to happen. Right. And you've walked through some very difficult ones. But it's, it's, um, I don't know, what would the words be that you would, you would use that you could um, either manage it better or um, stay above water better? Like what words would you use for someone, you know, going through that low, but staying in the flow? I survived and I survived in a way that my family can't even believe the family that knew me from the time I was, you know, born and raised, and they knew what a sensitive person I was, what a vulnerable person I was, um, to now I'm very independent and um, thriving. Thriving. Yeah. Oh, I, love, I love that so much. Because the lows are, are still there. I mean, people... You know, I kind of cringe when you hear someone out there saying, oh, it's all going to be perfect now. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Really far from the most shocking part. What? Sorry. Say that again. That really was the most shocking part was when you start down this path of seeing so beautiful and like it's spiritual, it's light, but yeah, that you don't expect all the downs that you get and have to work through, but that's where the growth comes in too. So, right. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, more about some of the, um, the downs that you experienced. Me? Oh, I was talking about Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, go ahead, Sandy. That's fine. I got to think on this one for a minute. Okay. Well, we're gonna bring it over to you, Sandy. All right. So frankly, some of the downs that I experienced were first, um, I lost my dog and by lost, I mean, my dog died. Like he didn't get lost. 
And he had been uh, with me for many, many years. Um, he was my constant companion. I even took him to work every single day. He and I became a certified therapy team and we went into hospice and hospitals. I literally never went anywhere without him. And so first he passed away and then four months later, my husband passed away. So those two things were pretty rock shifting. And I, those were two of the things that I don't think I could have uh, faced without the training that I'd had and the, my guides could see it coming. <laughs> and they put me on the road where I needed to get the tools that I got that were uh, spiritual tools that I actually learned through the SAGE method. Yes, and you also, because I recall, because we all stay so connected, I recall you were um, drawn to move to different locations and get set up in a different home and things like this. And those things were in play before your your lovely husband passed. And yes. so it was as if they were making sure that you were okay as you went along. Exactly. Doesn't take away the grief though. No. Right? No. Right. No, that's that's for sure. But those lows are more um like you can just you can handle them a little better. You can you can breathe through them a little deeper. What about you, Michelle? Um some of the lows that I experienced really had to do with uh, losing people in my life, people that um, once I changed, I didn't sync up with as well. Uh, not really having in the beginning anybody to talk to about this, going through it and getting frustrated because like I hit a roadblock and I don't know what that means when that happens. Self-doubt came in um, and having to work through that and just, you know, trust the universe. And that's one of my favorite sayings uh, recently is, um, she said yes to the universe because we step so much into self-doubt that when the universe asks us to do something, we really need to say yes, because they're our cheerleader. They're the ones that are preparing us and they know we're ready. And isn't that a better way to look at things like when an opportunity comes up and the, that it's the universe asking and they know we're ready. So we don't have to find an excuse not to do it. We can just step in knowing that they have our back. They trust us. Yeah, and you don't really find like how to manuals in this and it's not everyone is opening up intuitively not everyone is following a spiritual path that's not the common ground at least in this culture I know it's different we've got people all over the globe but it's you have to put some effort into finding other people that understand what you're what you're stepping into I think that can be quite the roadblock oh yeah and then you know people that you do know in your everyday life looking at you like what what are you talking about who are you and just having to decide you know we we've changed I, I still love you I'll just love you where you're at and I'll respect you for who you are but I, I need the same in return and some people are okay with that and other people say some really mean things yeah that that happens some relationships uh, can go by the wayside or can be can become more difficult for either the reason that they don't understand the path that you're going down and they're not willing, like they're not in a place where they can be comfortable with it. Or it can also be we get healthier. I mean, our mental health as a result of, of opening up spiritually improves dramatically does it fix everything not always but i at least for me i don't know if anyone else can talk on on that topic but for me i gotta tell you i the the amount of of lows that i feel now compared to the first 31 years of my life which it was almost daily for 31 years um, I just feel so grateful every day. I don't know if anyone else can talk about the mental health component. I can relate to that. Um, I find that meditating every day really does help me. And, um, you know, things go pretty smoothly for a while and then, you know, you hit a glitch. And for me, what happens is I just remind myself that I'm human and this is, there's a lesson in this. And what is the, you know, and then I take a moment, I sit back 
And um, I asked myself, what is the lesson that I need to learn by this? And, you know, how does this relate to stuff that's happened in the past too? Mm -hmm. I love that. That's, yeah, what is, what, what am I trying to learn from? Like, what am I supposed to get from this? <laughs> this fabulous wall that you hit on the head. So Brenda, what about you with, when it comes to, cause you were talking about self-care earlier. What about you when it comes to um, like, have you seen any shifts in happiness factor or anything like that? Stepping onto your spiritual path as a reader. Yes and no. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm so um, informal with my guides is because I've, I kind of sort of, knew about the supernatural growing up and knew that they could do things. <laughs> and that's, I guess, my disappointment in them carried over as, as an adult because I know they're not, yes, they're magic, but it's not 24-7, you know, year round. You have to work with it. And that's why I always go back to Davey with him with his arms folded and tapping his foot is just he waits for the, the two-year-old to get done with her hissy fit <laughs> and and the thing too that that um Leslie said about you hitting a roadblock I find that you don't or at least for me you don't do a routine with this it won't be long before the candle burning is going to end up being um incense or sage or something else. And I, it's a rotation type thing that we go through. It's almost like our souls need feeding a certain way during the year, certain, certain ways. So you just do whatever feels comforting. And you know that they're listening to you like, well, finally. <laughs> But it makes sense to rotate through the year, like, you know, different seasons, mm -hmm. different moon cycles, different, different patterns like that. I think one of the things that I love about the practitioner program that all of you um, went through, I mean, you're, you're in essence, the sage team now, that's what you are. But I think the thing I love about the program is it asks you to kind of invites you as the practitioner to become you not someone else, but like you, like, let's bring out that authentic intuition that, that works for you. And I think so many people think that they couldn't do that. They look at readers and they think I couldn't open up like that. And again, I'll say everyone can check in with a reader to, you know, get a little confirmation, even readers check in with readers. And I think it's a wonderful thing. So it's healthy and ha it, it's a good thing to get readings and to check in when you need to, but to use it in somebody's individual day-to-day -day life. I have a lot of people that say to me, oh, I couldn't do that. Like they'll sit down and get a reading from, from one of us and then say, well, I couldn't, I couldn't get that much information on my own. What would you say to them? You have to trust and heck, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I think that's my motto. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. I just had a lunch yesterday with somebody who's a psychic medium in um, the town that I live in. And I was, it was our first meeting and we were just chit chatting and um, I used the word with her. Well, this really weird thing happened. And she goes, wait, stop right there. No, we're not using that word weird anymore. Every time you use it, hit the delete button. So pretend you have a button in your hand. And when you hear the word weird or another word that uh, throws some doubt out there, hit it. Nothing's weird. <laughs> and so it was really refreshing to talk to somebody else and um, get her perspective on those things. And she was so encouraging, just like all of you. And it was just natural and easy to talk and kind of um, learn from each other. I love that it's like normalizing it a bit, you know, again, when the majority of people, at least in this culture are not necessarily exploring 
uh, that that word weird where we put the stop. I like putting the stop on the word weird. Yes. And yeah, <laughs> it's like she said, just pretend like there's a button, like, you know, the easy button or something. It's a stop button. And every time you say it, you have to push it. And then pretty soon you'll remember not to. Mm-hmm. That word. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Uh, we had a couple people um, coming into the groups and they were asking about uh, why for them do different, like different days, they feel like they're into, I'm not going to say this very clearly, am I? <laughs> why for them, what was happening for them is at different days, they were getting intuition in different ways. Um, I would love to hear from each of you who are now like established readers. This is what you do. Is it different on different days? Have you found patterns with that? Do you have strengths? Do you have certain things that you can rely on or any advice for someone who's like, I don't know, every day it's different. You do have to pay attention to it and how it feels because I had a lot of doubt about something that Davy just could not convince me <laughs> it was going to be okay. I mean, I, I just couldn't let go of this one thing. And I think it was right after sacred space or something. My other guides came in and kind of sort of, you know, you got to learn to listen to Davey. (laughs) Davey, your main guide. Yes. But they came in and kind of calmed my nerves down where Davey couldn't. And it's it's really, you do have to pay attention to... um, me, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> so when I don't want to listen to him, they're going to come at me in a different direction. So yes, it's going to be different every day because no two days are alike. And I will say that for me, I found that doing readings earlier in the day rather than later in the day works best for me because I usually get some information the night before that wakes me up. and. Um, So I'll get up, meditate, and then be able to step right into a reading rather than wait all day for it to happen. And sometimes even still with readings, the nerves start to pick up as the day goes on, like in anticipation of it. So if I can just get up and that's my morning and it works best for me. See, I do better in afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead, Brenda. I was just saying, I do better in afternoons. I have to have my caffeine. I, I have to, to grumble that I got up another day. <laughs> it's just when you're retired and you're not by the clock anymore, and then all of a sudden you are again, you, you decide your own hours. So afternoons are better for me. <laughs> it worked out good when we traded readings because you're closer to the East Coast. I'm closer, closer to the West Coast. So it was a win-win for both of us. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Things change for me um, when I'm growing or when I'm not growing. If I'm, you know, if I've taken a little <clears throat> vacation from readings, then um, I may need a couple days to really get back into it. And um, usually I hear things and um, I see some things. Um, and usually I'm not emotional, but recently, you know, during a reading, I got very, very emotional and I see that as growth for me. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a great way to say it because there are, there are times where you're growing or you're expanding or another sense is coming in and maybe it's toggling back and forth between two of the senses. So that makes a lot of sense about the senses. I have a fun question. What is uh, the strangest thing you've ever picked up intuitively? <laughs> I, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, I came out of my office one morning. Well, it was late, at, late morning, early afternoon. <laughs> my husband's like, how'd your session go? We went to the underworld. He goes, that's nice. <laughs> Kept on you know, like going to my next. And it's fun to have conversations like that with family that live in the house with you because it's it's just like I stopped dead and I went, 
you know what, if the neighbors heard that, they'd think we do voodoo or something over here. But it's just, those are the conversations we have now. And they're normal, natural, everyday conversations. Yeah. It's interesting how all of a sudden with time, those become just part of the the verbiage it becomes part of the experience and it becomes normalized as it should be and it's not weird it's not weird Uh, Bo, do you want a real example of the weirdest thing that ever happened to a person intuitively yes this is kind of fun I worked in a law firm and I was one day running around at the corner in an office and imagine in the corner, there are all these cubicles. I'm sorry, there's all these cubicles and then you go around a hall and then you go around the, the corner. And I ran around that corner a hundred times a day. And one day I ran around the corner and I stopped and I suddenly had this feeling, it just flooded through me. And I turned to the secretary in the corner and I said, you're going to have a baby? And the look on her face was just like, no, I'm not. I wish I were, but no, I'm not. Well, a few days later, she got a call for the attorney that she worked for from a woman who said that she had her best friend, her daughter's best friend sitting there crying her eyes out because she was pregnant and she couldn't keep the baby and she needed a lawyer to do a, an adoption, that secretary got that baby. Wow. Yeah. She said that, that when she got the call, she started shaking. And she all of a sudden knew that was going to be her baby. And she went into the lawyer and she said, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we've got to make this happen. How about that? And she that did. Is- that is an excellent example of using your intuition all the time. Like, like well, I, I wasn't, I really, I didn't do anything on purpose. And I probably, if I thought about it, should never have said that to a woman. You're going to have a baby. I mean, but it all just happened, you know? And it all just happened so quickly. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, we ask permission, but there are these interesting moment it's almost like I bet you you kind of felt like time fell away for a second when you interact with her right (laughs) and it's just that strange moment where all of a sudden the whole world falls away and then you're like in this soul connection with this other person that you don't even know yes Mm -hmm. that is a great that's a great example that is a great example Leslie do you have any because I know as an animal communicator someone who unlike me dogs talk to you and we'll communicate with you but do you have any um unusual requests that ever came from an animal or unusual things like that I have one from a uh I I have an example from a human um I had this picture of an aunt of mine um in my head and I saw her crying and I said to my husband it was right there um, you know, you're going to think this is crazy, but I saw Aunt Yetta and she was crying. I think she's died. And we were in Canada. We were out of town then. And when I came home, my father called me and told me that her Aunt Yetta's husband, Uncle Izzy, had died. And so I had gotten it. You know, I, I got the scene, but I didn't quite get the message correctly. Um, as far as animals go, I did a reading um today for someone online um so i haven't seen looked to see if there was feedback yet but this was a woman who had a lot of cats in her house she she rescued cats and she was having an issue with one of her cats that was every time she left the house the cat was pooping um not in the litter box and she was at her wits end and i talked to the cat and the cat said very clearly that she wanted to be an only child and (laughs) so I relayed the message um I relayed the message what can you do you know 
And she wanted her own litter box to litter boxes too. Okay, well that's a that's a happy in between, right? I don't know, but well, it's, it's hard to go to the only child piece. I get, well, but well, I can completely see an animal feeling that way. Yeah, lock her in a room by by herself with two litter boxes and uh, and go visit her a lot. That's that's true. I could see that. I could see that. What about you, Michelle? <sighs> There's so much. Um... I'm thinking um, I had an attachment probably 18 months ago, uh, and there's a whole backstory to that, which I won't get into, um, but the attachment was from my hometown, and back in like March of last year, I suddenly got this urge that I just had to go back home. I wanted to go back to that area over the July 4th weekend. And I had totally forgot everything about the attachment. And it just didn't dawn on me. I'm like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to go back there then. And then as soon as it, it dawned on me, like this is an anniversary date that I'm going back for, everything kind of started falling apart. But my husband and I, uh, we had gone to a winery because it was in Napa. And we were sitting there and a lady at the table next to us just started talking about why I wanted to go there to begin with. Like she was there visiting like different sites and stuff like that. And just how random is that? Like the universe was setting it up. I'm like, oh, I, I caught on. And then it kind of starts falling apart. But then I meet this random lady who I didn't ask anything about it. She just started telling me, this is why I'm here. And this is where I was yesterday. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then it happened at a winery that really sell um, the whole basis of it is dark versus light. I mean, that's what the label means. And so it was just weird, the location, just running into this person. Um, She's very friendly, probably the wine and it just flowed and we had a great conversation. But <laughs> wow, like, how did this end up on my path of everywhere I could have been right now, there's someone there kind of for the same reason. I think that's a great example because really what I hear when you tell it, when you tell that example is when we go down this path and we open up intuitively and we acknowledge that we're on a spiritual path, that there are guides watching over us, loved ones watching over us. When we sit with a reader and get this information from guides, from loved ones, from source, we're really acknowledging that we're a spiritual being. And when we do that, we radiate off that energy. And this woman, so, so you were radiating off, off your energy, your energy was radiating off of you. It's a better way to say it. And what you were thinking about and, and pondering is in that energy. And it comes into contact with this other woman. And without saying a word, she's filling in the blanks with the answers for you. She is. And I mean, the Napa Valley is big. You have the Sonoma side and the Napa side. And I ran into her like the next day too, it was just really strange. And I'm like, okay, guides, I got it. Like you're putting us <laughs> in each other's orbit and how cool is that? I just need to trust. I need to let go of expectations and just trust the process and not try to overthink it or like, oh, they're having me come home because of this reason, because then I'm putting expectations on it. So let go of them. I They'll love that. Around. Well, what would be one last thing to you, one last piece of advice? Like if you had to give a piece of advice to the people listening uh, for their path, uh, what would that be? Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Yes. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. What you practice, you get good at. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Have fun with it. Yes. And find people you can talk to and share your experiences with. Uh, that was just a boatload of great advice. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here. Thank you. I love this community. I absolutely love the unconditional love, the acceptance and the care and the support that you give people in this community and people reaching out for guidance and assistance. And I'm just grateful for it. Thank you so much. I will see you all again soon for the next roundtable.
Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.